Hello everyone, Fire Friendly here, and today I want to talk about the Camel ADV accessories. And the occasion is T7 turned 60, 60,000 kilometers in three and something years, four rallies, um, some Sahara, some water, some all that. Not the most gentle kilometers ever for the bike or for the accessories, let's put it that way. So the last time when I would talk about the accessories was back in Morocco when we were stuck with uh, improbably an adventuring because of COVID there. And um, you know, it's 50,000 kilometers and some of the accessories work. I broke literally everything on this bike. Uh, you know, no question about it. But um, there has been some good customer service. There has been some things which did work and some things which I just threw away and it did just didn't bother with them uh, anymore. So um, the Camel ADV is a great example because I do have uh, quite a few things from the Camel. They are smaller accessories, let's put it that way, but they, that's beautiful about the Camel ADV is that they solve the problems and um, they do it very, very well. The first thing to talk about are the traction pegs and everything's gonna be sorted by effectively the significance of a problem which it solves for me. And the traction pegs solve a big problem with the OEM um, pegs which I used for quite some time. And the problem with these, uh, apart from the fact that there is not enough space to get mud through this, uh, is that these teeth are kind of gentle. They are not really sharp. And um, I have ridden a dinaric rally with these and there was a puddle on a straight line and I was just blasting it. And I was kind of like, yeah, puddle, okay. Uh, so I tried to lift up the front wheel, didn't manage to do that w very well. So the water literally knocked my boots, well, one boot off. So I was kind of skating through that at high speed on one leg, less than ideal. So when I came back from the rally, I said, well, I need some packs. And the problem with a lot of brands is that they are always a little bit wider um, or thicker or they're lower or higher or whatever. But I really wanted just packs which are having a better traction and more space in between. And that's a camel. And funnily enough, my friend uh, came from a rally and um, he was like, yeah, I have them and I don't need them. I'm like, why? Because I destroyed them, he said. I'm like, what? And what he did is that he was replacing the studs which were with the camel with some of his, and he literally glued them in with, I think, red Loctite or something. So he tried to drill out the <laughs> old studs and uh, just didn't work. So he's like, yeah, if you want them, just take them. I bought a new set. So I'm like, yeah, definitely. Definitely I want them. So you don't really want to have anything sharp in there, like pointy, because that's gonna destroy your boots. So uh, what he said, just use 11 or 12 millimeter um, set screws um, and let them protrude out only a little bit, like a millimeter or two millimeters um, above the foot pack. That's enough to have a really, really good traction and keep the boots healthy. Like if you look at my boots, I have done a lot of kilometers on this with the pegs, with the set setup I have, and the sole is not really damaged. The second most important thing from the Camel ADV for me is the one thing clutch. Um, because I'm a programmer and the strong grip is not really our trait. Um, and Every time when you ask for a softer clutch on the internet, everybody's like, yeah, you need to work your hands. And uh, I kind of do that, but it doesn't help uh, for hours on an MX track, really, trust me. Now I had the process actually getting to this one finger clutch. So I tried these little um, levers uh, from the different bikes a little bit longer. Didn't do much of a difference, to be honest, so gone. Then I found this one, which um, has similar concepts. So this one goes to your um, clutch lever at the top, the clutch cable goes here, and you actually pull in here and there's more force on it. So this does make it easier, but on the other hand, you have this little tiny box at the top uh, next to your clutch lever, and it just doesn't look really well. 
and um, the dirt goes in and then it gets a little bit harder as well. So that failed as well. So then I was kind of looking at the clutch, uh, one finger clutch from cable. So it's kind of like, Corey, can you send me one? I would like to test it against this one and the other solutions. He's like, yeah. So I'm running the one finger clutch on the softest, the third position. The friction zone with the one finger clutch is really, really wide. So it starts quite soon and then you have a lot of friction to play with. At the moment, I have about 3.8 kilos on the pull on the clutch um, before I had much more, I think towards like eight, nine. One really important thing is to keep your clutch cable and the clutch lever pivot quite clean. That will actually uh, make a huge difference in terms of how much force you need to uh, use in order to pull the clutch. This makes a huge difference. It makes rallies and the mix tracks easy for me. Um, so yeah, really, really good solution for it. The only thing uh, to be careful about is this um, circlip tends to fly out if you don't pro install it properly. So watch this video. There are two sides of the circlip and you need to put it in in the correct way. The next thing is the Camel ADV tail tidy, which uh, I got because high exhaust, it completely blasted out my indicator. Now the reason for uh, the indicators being fried is that this OEM rear uh, it comes in here and then an indi indicator was effectively in here which um, didn't really work I didn't mind this um, it works as a fender actually and you know it is not that heavy the Camel ADV tail tidy is the new version which I got now 815 grams which is a substantial amount of weight but um, the reason why it's so heavy is because it's from steel. It's not uh, from aluminium, which would make it brittle, right? And it would break if it would be aluminium. Well, I broke this one as well. <laughs> so what happened is where well, you see this kind of weld uh, in here, it's very, very weak in this first version. And effectively it broke on Albanian rally. I have to be completely honest, I think when I was carrying tires, there was a downward pressure on this part, which puts stress on exactly this spot because the bolts are in here. Also, it broke in here. So we have wells in here and here, I don't know if it's gonna focus, but there is a crack. So I think when I crashed, I just twisted with the license plate and it was gone. Now, um, when I posted about the cracked tail tidy, uh, Camel, well, Corey, contacted me and said, I'm going to send you a new one and we have improved it. So what they did is, um, I'm going to put them together. What they did, they put a reinforcing brackets, so they welded them on. And um, I really like it's from steel because this is the old one and I really really think that this weld is going to last quite a long time and even if it wouldn't I can weld it again or I can just weld on the reinforced brackets and just use the tail tidy uh, till oblivion effectively. If I wouldn't have the high exhaust I would probably not need it let's be honest with it so yeah but it works quite well and thank Corey for the new version and if I break the new version, I'm going to be surprised what happens next. <laughs> the next item solves one of the annoying problems which I kind of um, learned to live with. And that is the leaky tank. Uh, when I drop the bike, the tank leaks. And um, I think there was an idea on uh, I think Tenere700.net forum, uh, which came all ADV turned into a product. And they improved the seal in here. I haven't tried it yet because I haven't dropped the bike yet. 
uh, since I install it. It's like eight dollars. It's super cheap, and you can probably like make it yourself anyway. Okay, let's do a tank leak test. It's a slightly downhill here, so um, it's gonna be pain in the ass to actually pick it up, but. It should now leak. And oh, it doesn't. Let's make it harder. Huh. I guess that's a success. Uh, normally, this whole area would be full of fuel. So I mean, that works, easy, for eight dollars, well done. Another item, very simple, very cheap. Uh, it's a, a stronger side stand spring, and it just keeps the side stand up when you're jumping or when you're going on the off-road, and it doesn't make this rattle sound, which is uh, very, very annoying. Now, I had before the spring from Rally Raid, that unfortunately flew off when I broke my side stand when I was doing a pivot turn. I do a lot of pivot turns. I have a video how I turned the T7 um, with that. Very useful in a small areas or where you just need to turn around um, stationary and all that. But the problem is that this aluminium side stand obviously is not going to be strong enough to do that very, very often or load it. So it would be really, really nice to have a steel side stand. The last thing to talk about is the famous anti-bubble head, which solves the problem of uh, vibration on a headlight and a dashboard. Pretty, pretty annoying when I got the Tenere. Um, I solved it in a different way. I used to have a, a toy, a fluffy toy stuffed between the windshield and the headlight and the dashboard. And that worked very, very well. Unfortunately, I lost it. Um, between somewhere between Aurelia, Albania and Czech Republic. So now I'm left with the anti-bubble head, which I bought by accident because when I was buying it, I had the toy and I, I thought that I needed it because the whole front was loose. But then when I was installing the anti-bubble head, um, I had just loose balls. So, <laughs> but now I have it and it's useful. Um, so what it does, it connects effectively the top of the crossbar with the headlight and makes this whole piece a little bit more rigid. But I have now a little bit different problem uh, with the front. Uh, I have a video from Tunisia about it um, and that's it, that this whole uh, plastic piece which comes from here, goes up there and holds the crossbar um, and the headlight obviously and all that, is moving in this side. And there are two bolts, on one on each side, and you cannot tighten them because there are these spacers which prevent you from tightening the bolts so much that you would crack the plastic. Uh, but unfortunately, the spacers are smaller than the hole in the plastic, which means that it just moves up and down. So I'm using zip ties to actually tighten that and uh, hold it onto the frame. So if you have this clacky, clicky, clacky, plasticky sound coming from somewhere in the front, it may be actually the same problem which I had. Um, and I have no solution for that yet. I've been talking long enough about what I have, so equally important is what I don't have and why. One thing is the high fender. Now, I'm cheating a little bit here because I actually have the high fender conversion, uh, not from KD, Camel ADV because we just made it ourselves, but I also have a video that I don't really like it and I don't have it, I'm not using it. But what's left from the high fender conversion, and that is really, really useful in my opinion, is that the, it turns out to have the brake line separated to the left and right side. And that is very useful if you want to take the um, fender off quickly. It's because it's just six bolts. Um, so that is really good. I have the whole video about testing different fenders and all that, so I'm gonna link it. Um, you can see that, so that one thing. Uh, second thing is the stronger um, side stand. Yes, that would be, as I mentioned, really good, especially for the pivot turns, so I'm not gonna break the um, aluminum one, and if I do break the steel one, I can always weld it. I love the steel. 
Next thing which I don't have is the auxiliary tank which he makes. And the reason why I don't have it is because I have the Rotopax. What I did is that I modified my Ausbeck Multitech um, X frames so heavily that what I can actually do is I can just slide the Rotopax in like that. Which means that I can take it off for the rally or I can keep it there empty or full. Uh, what else? Uh, do, 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 do. Ah, skid plate and the high exhaust. So let's start with the high exhaust. I do have a high exhaust, but the high exhaust conversion has been done by Punk Moto in Czech Republic, uh, which I with the Scorpion exhaust. To be honest, um, I think that shipping exhaust and downpipe from US to EU is just, you know, paying taxes more or less. So, um, yeah better to find a European solution for me if you're in the US yes well that makes sense in terms of the skid plate so I had the Yamaha skid plate they may destroyed it now I have the 3d Moto PL carbon fiber one and what I like about it is that everybody says I'm gonna break it I have not breaking it yet and that's Albanian rally Tunisia and Albania so it's doing pretty pretty well um, I did damage it, but I'm going to make a separate video about it. I think it's a great solution for 160 euros or something like that, you know? So that's it. What I like about Camel is they test the products, they evolve the products, they solve the problems rather well, and, you know, it's much better than to, to invest into craftsmanship than just buy something from China from some CNC machine or some you know, robot. So I really, really like that. Um, and uh, let's continue with the next episode. I think there's going to be a service and then I definitely need to talk about um, Outback Motortech after 60,000 Ks.